And the New Zealand rocket lab should not be selling out to the American military industrial corporation. We want there to be no military launches from uh, from Mahia by Rocket Lab. We don't want those things to be happening. The minister has the veto powers to veto things if it's against the national interest. Our problem is is that the minister has not vetoed anything. What we're standing for today is to stop the militarization of space. I have no faith in the Rocket Lab anymore. I'm Sid Kepa, I'm the uh, president of uh, First Union, Kai Whakahaere of First Union, and the Kai Whakahaere Tuaru of Te Kauwai Kamea, Kai Mahi, the Council of Trade Unions. So we're here to support this, uh, even though, you know, you hear people say there's 200 workers there. Uh, yeah, everybody gets redundant, but they're going to make the whole of uh, everybody redundant by doing this, putting that stuff up there, stuffing up our bloody planet. We, can't, we won't be able to see Matariki with all their rubbish up there. <laughs> um, even this morning, reading a, a little story on Newsroom that explains how far New Zealand is going into the whole space industry and what an important commercial enterprise this is going to be for us when we know, when we read more about Rocket Lab, that it is effectively a base, a US base, I guess we'd say, you know, with the ownership not here in New Zealand, but out of country. We have no, it has no accountability to us, no clear accountability. We call on our government to explain to us how they approved payloads going into space like Gunsmoke J, which is about improving the targeting of weapons, including, we believe, potentially, nuclear weapons. If it's about targeting, how can you decide what it's going to be used for in the future? We'll have no say. And we still don't really understand the process that our government went through to approve such a thing. Um, so today I'd like to announce that on behalf of the Greens I will be launching a private members bill to prohibit the launching of military payloads from New Zealand soil. It's going to amend the Outer Space and High Altitudes Activities Act because that's the, that's the primary legislation uh, that is being used to actually get permission to launch things into outer space. Uh, currently within that, within that act the, the Minister has the veto powers to veto things if it's against the national interest. Our problem is is that the Minister has not vetoed anything. I think it's really important that we we, st we actually take hold of our own international responsibilities to, and commitment to peace. Uh, what happens is when you privatise that stuff, which is what's actually happened here, uh, Rocket, Rocket Lab has managed to circumvent our international obligations, I think, and our commitments to peace as well. And that is actually something that we need to really get a handle on as parliamentarians and parliament as well, but in particular with governments as well. And so what my bill will do is we'll draw a line in the sand saying, hey, if you think this is okay, why? And then we also heard about environmental impacts. Uh, and uh, Sid talked a, bit, a little bit about them sending space junk into outer space and how bad that is. Uh, but then also the impacts on, 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 the, on the launch areas as well. So there are a large number of concerns about the impacts on, on the environment itself, on um, native bird species and other, uh, other um, species that are around the, la uh, the launch area within Mahia as well. So there are a lot of questions.
And essentially what I had to say to them was, first, space is the last commons that we have of humanity. And space should not be used in the interest of any national security. We can't go putting satellites up into space which are for the purpose of keeping one nation happy and secure at the potential disadvantage of the rest of the world. So if we're going to be up there in space, and we have to ask the question as to what sort of activities in space are consistent with the needs of our planet and the needs of the future of not just ourselves as humans, but of the whole ecosystem and everything to which we belong, we're, we're going to have to have some serious uh, discussions internationally, and we're going to have to have agreements which actually limit the sort of thing that we're trying to achieve here as far as our own country of Aotearoa is concerned right here today. The issue that we've got is actually one to take it from here further out and it needs to be taken for any of you who are in the Labour Party, uh, at regional meetings, at policy committee meetings, up to the government because it was the mass action around uh, New Zealand and then through the Labour Party that got the legislation of 1987 to be a nuclear weapon free country and what's happening here is part of an undermining of that aim of the people of New Zealand. And the aim was for an independent foreign policy. It was very good in the meeting to have Peter Wills there, uh, particularly his knowledge of physics. But throughout New Zealand, we have knowledge of everybody that we want an independent foreign policy. It's impossible to have an independent foreign policy if you work with the United States military. And the bill that's just been outlined to you is an important part of putting back integrity into our quest for an independent foreign policy. You cannot have a concern for indigenous people if you work with the US military. You could start a long way back, but if you just start with Nagasaki and Hiroshima, our international war crime, move through Korea, the millions dead in Indochina, in Africa, in South America, you find one common thread. That's the military power and the economic might of the United States of America. And this is a small part of that. Paul Buchanan, a former member of the CIA put it very clearly, which is, it's part of the kill chain. This is not to say that when the payload is launched, that the uh, instrumentation itself can lead to the launching of a nuclear missile. It's part of the whole. The country which has 800 military bases around the world is the United States of America. China, at best, if you count the Spratly Islands, which is a uh, in dispute, has three. We are here, all of us, to get a message out, for goodness sake, take up the issue of international affairs. And now it is an encouraging sign to have the Green Party to work on that cooperation and call on the Labour government, make sure we have an independent foreign policy by pulling out the permission to launch these payloads for the military of the United States from New Zealand. Thank you very much. Just to say that I, I regard myself as representing New Zealand Nuclear Free Peacemaking, which is the organization my father started in 1981-82. I'm pleased to report that one of the organizations I'm closely liaising with in the United States is called the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. 
So really, we are in liaison with the best American minds who want to stop warfare because it's a barbaric practice and in the 21st century, we should not be engaging in it and certainly not encouraging it and certainly not spending millions and billions of dollars on it. People will not know, they could not know, but de facto, New Zealand has become a member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It ensures that the uh, militaries and intelligence networks around the world are interoperable. And we are space for peace, Aotearoa. With the potential to do amazing things with technology comes a massive responsibility. My focus today is talking about the potential health and environmental implications of the communication systems that will be necessary to control these satellites. How safe is this going to be? Now, when you add space to that, you've got another layer. And I just want to mention here that it was in March of this year that the Gunsmoke J payload was launched by Rocket Lab from Mahia Peninsula for the purpose of the US Military Space Missile Defense Command for warfare combat targeting. And that Rocket Lab is currently an American-owned company and in fact a major investor is Lockheed Martin, the biggest producer of conventional weapons and nuclear weapons in the world. So this is what we are opposing. My message is very short. I'm sure Peter Beck and his staff are watching from the top. My message to you, Peter, you have two children and those children will be affected by what you're doing today. Have a look at the South Pacific, what the Motorola Atoll is doing. It's splitting. So what are you going to take note of now? Kia ora koutou. Kia ora. And we are so grateful that so many of us have been able to come together and create the spearhead of collective consciousness and conscience for the well-being of humanity and the blessed Mother Earth, Papatuanuku.